Ah, the humble laptop converted into a desktop that I gave my sister and she never used. Like, seriously, she never used it. Perhaps it had something to do with the way you turned it on and its top heaviness and overall lack of performance, as you'll see in a second. First, let's go over the specs on this old N5030 from Dell. It has a Pentium T4500 dual-core processor with 4GB of RAM and a 150GB El Cheapo hard drive from eBay. The graphics chipset on this CPU is utter garbage, like complete and total garbage, as with most Intel graphics solutions. It never performed well, but the lack of a driver really doesn't help. The only driver available for this chipset is Windows 7 and Windows 8. As you can see in Minecraft, the lowest possible settings it struggles to get 25 FPS. In Left 4 Dead 2, which I forgot to turn on multiple rendering but it didn't make much of a difference, unplayable is still unplayable. It chokes on the fire of the first floor, pulling off a measly 4 FPS. Insurgency is no better, averaging at 13. Game streaming is hardly any better. The game lags and stutters all the time, rendering all games unplayable. Normal YouTube streaming suffers as well, failing to load any semblance of a video at 4K. Bye bye Linux, I'll miss you. So after installing Windows 10, Windows Update found a generic driver to use offering the same performance as Linux's. But this is where it gets exciting, external graphics. To do external graphics, you might think that you need a Thunderbolt 3 port, but you actually don't. This adapter here called The Beast converts mini PCIe into full size PCIe. Now, it'll still be a 1x or 2x slot, not the full 16x, but you can still plug in a GPU, even though it'll be reduced performance. The GPU I'm using is an AMD HD6450, I think. You will also need a 5.5mm outer diameter or and 2.1mm inner diameter 12 volt with appropriate amperage power supply, or an ATX power supply for cards that need additional 6 or 8 pin plugs. After plugging everything in and using the power clip, I was worried that it wouldn't boot, but alas it did. After booting, I checked the device manager and lo and behold, there it was. It's listed as a 7000 series card though. I installed the driver and we're off to the races. Right? Alright, so because the CPU is at 100%, I think we're going to see a lot of bottlenecking. Keep in mind, I have about like 100 mods installed because of the way the Steam mod manager works, it sucks to uninstall them and I think it just crashed. Yeah, it totally did.
Or maybe not. Let me get some headphones too before getting audio. Yeah, it crashed. Get yeah, left dead to another shot. Hopefully it works this time. So I just want to say to get games working, I had to attach an external monitor via a DVI cable. My hypothesis as to why it wasn't working on the built-in display is that it's hardwired to the integrated graphics. Now, as you see in Minecraft, it's Stutter City on fancy graphics, something that Optifine would surely fix, and it's definitely playable on fast. Left 4 Dead 2 will actually run now, and while the card isn't performing as well as it does in my Core 2 Duo system, it will be adequate for the purposes of this machine, getting around 30 FPS. I can't get Euro Truck to run with this card, and I can't tell you why that is or what it's like when it runs. And it's a shame too, because that's a really good game. Skyrim were also going pretty good on low settings at native resolution, and even better at 720p, averaging 30 to 45 FPS. So I no longer have this machine. I gave it to my little sister, and I want to talk about why I chose the HD6450. For, for starters, it's cheap, low power consumption, no 6 pin or 8 pin power needed. I had one from iPlex Media Server and was satisfied with, with the performance. It works with the Beast, the little adapter thing, and because the new Nvidia cards don't with the latest uh, drivers. Now the card that showed I showed here is not the same card that I sent the machine off with. It is the same make and model, but it's a tad bit more glitchy. Let me elaborate. With the new card plugged into the plugged in, the machine won't boot. Kind of a problem. So to boot, you unplug the GPU, get signed in, hibernate the machine, plug in the GPU, and then it will work. It didn't do that with the old GPU, so I'm low-key afraid that one day it'll stop working. Also, this upgrading 
creating this machine took way longer than it should have. It should have only taken a couple weeks for all the parts to ship and whatnot, but it took me all summer because I was a slacker and didn't order the new GPU until two weeks ago. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a good day.